You've heard of popular budgeting trends like the 50-30-20 rule and you're probably wondering which one is the best one for your budget. Well if so, this video is for you. In today's video, I'm going to discuss popular budgeting trends like the 50-30-20 rule, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hey everyone, my name is Sydney Brown, financial coach and budgeting expert here to help you create and stick to a budget so that you can stop living paycheck to paycheck and start spending money with confidence. This channel is for single black women who feel overwhelmed when they think about their financial situation, confused when they think about managing their money, and shame when they think about their financial future. I'm here to help you create and stick to a budget so that you can stop living paycheck to paycheck and start spending money with confidence. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss another video. Alright, so before we dive into today's video, I wanted to make sure that you were signed up to receive the 52 actionable challenges. These challenges are designed to help you earn more money, save more money, and spend money on things you actually care about. So the link is in the description. Make sure you click that and get signed up for the email newsletter. All right, so let's dive into today's video. So the first budgeting trend is proportional budgeting. This could be the 50-30-20 rule or, you know, another one I saw as I was researching was the 70-20-10. So there's all different sorts of proportions, percentages that you could, um, you know designate to different categories okay so what is it i want to start each category with like kind of describing what each budgeting trend is and this one is the 50 30 20 rule so in this type of budgeting you would designate 50 percent to your um needs 30 percent would go to your wants and 20 percent would go towards savings so what's good about it the good is that it's very straightforward. It gives you a easy and straightforward framework for um, cutting back expenses for needs, making sure that you have something that you want in your budget and you know, giving you some money allocated towards savings. I think the good of this budgeting trend is that it's easy, it's straightforward, it's simple to understand and apply. So the bad is, well, what happens if you could save more than 20%? Are you actually spending more on needs and wants than you actually need to? Because that's what the rule says. It's, so could you be actually saving more, but you just haven't thought through how to actually do that? I believe this budgeting trend encourages wasteful spending among high income earners. And it's also possible that in order to achieve your financial goals, you need to save more than 20% to get there. The ugly is there is no one size fits all approach to budgeting. No one can tell you how much your needs are gonna cost you. No one can tell you how much your wants are gonna cost you. Nobody can really tell you how much you should be saving. It's catchy, it's easy to remember. It's understandable why it's such a popular budgeting trend, but um, for people that could do more, you know, there is it's possible that you could be wasting money. If you are a low income earner or you live in a high cost of living city, your needs might cost more than 50%, and that's just the reality of where you live. So who does this benefit? I believe this budgeting trend benefits overspenders and people who are brand new to budgeting. If you need a simple framework for where to start, or if you have trouble and need to cut back on some major expenses, this could give you a framework for where to start. All right, what's next? Number two, this popular budgeting trend is known as pay yourself first budgeting, also known as anti-budgeting. What is this? What is anti-budgeting? What is pay yourself first budgeting? Pay yourself first budgeting or also known as anti-budgeting is um, where you essentially the opposite of proportional budgeting. So in proportional budgeting, you would start with your needs, move to your wants and get to your um, savings at the end. 
This um, budgeting trend encourages you to assign a certain amount towards saving and then allocate the rest of the expenses or rest of the income towards um, your needs and wants. So basically 50, 30, 20, but in reverse. So instead of prioritizing your needs and wants, it, encourage you, it encourages you to prioritize your savings. And then after that, what, with what's left, decide what to do with your needs and wants. So what's good about this budgeting trend? It's very time efficient. You just take your income and multiply it by a certain percent, automate that towards your savings and move on. It can feel very set it and forget it. It doesn't feel as restrictive because it has you think about what you can do and doesn't focus the priority on what you can't or aren't able to do. So what's bad about this strategy? It's possible that once again, you could achieve your goals faster, but you, instead of spending the money or allocating the money towards savings, you set your percentage too low and you could have achieved your goal a lot faster. You could also end up overspending and not achieve your goal in the time frame that you would have liked. What's ugly about it? The ugly side is what happens if you set your percentage too high and you don't have enough money for your needs and wants. So who does this benefit? I think this benefits the people who are overspenders and anyone who doesn't enjoy getting into the numbers. If digging into the numbers isn't your enjoyment, it doesn't provide you fulfillment, maybe this budgeting strategy is for you. All right, the next budgeting trend is automated, fully automated. Okay, so I would describe fully automated budgeting as when you um, set up your direct deposit. You can oftentimes set a certain percentage to go to your bank account, or like to go to certain banks or different bank accounts, right? So if you set a certain percentage to automatically go into your um, spending account and then your checking account and then automate a certain percentage to go directly into your savings account so you never see it and you don't even have to think about it. This also could include um, setting up automatic um, withdrawals from your bank account to make sure your bills are getting paid. So what's good about this strategy? The good is that you, it's very simple. Um, it automatically puts a certain percent, it automatically puts a certain amount in your savings account so you never even see your, um, the amount that you, had to save you don't have to think about it it completely eliminates the option to save because oftentimes when you're looking at the amount that you have to save you might choose to lower it or increase it based on how you are feeling about it it's also nice to know that whatever in your bank account is free game because your savings has already been taken care of so what's bad about it what's bad is it's very generic what happens when you get a bonus what happens when you have higher expenses next month because of Christmas or, you know, different things are happening. You want to go on a vacation this month, so you need to plan for those things. It's not very custom. It's very generic budget. What's ugly about it? Similar to uh, anti-budgeting, what happens if you don't leave enough money in your account for your bills not to get paid? Or oftentimes, if you're completely dependent or fully automated um, withdrawals, what happens if you overlook that something's not coming out or not getting um, taken out appropriately, you could get, it could lead to big, big problems. I guess that's both bad and ugly because it's like, it's bad if you aren't noticing um, for a month that your bill didn't get paid. It's ugly if you don't notice for three months that your bills aren't getting paid and then you know, you could get your car repossessed, you could get evicted, things, much worse things could happen if you're fully dependent on automated, um, on an automated system of budgeting. Who does this benefit? As always, it benefits overspenders, people who value time efficiency, and also people who have trouble paying their bills on time. If you don't, if you're not sure that you're gonna make sure, like remember to pay your bills on a certain date, fully automating, Fully automated could be the way to go, but I think, you know, with anything, you have to track it and keep track of what's happening um, because 
you know, if you're not responsible, as always, bad things could happen. All right, the next budgeting trend is the envelope system. Okay, so the, uh, the envelope system is essentially where you get your bank, you get your direct deposit each month from your job, but then you go to the bank to receive your full income in cash. And then you go home and proceed to stuff cash envelopes with names of different um, with names of different accounts on them. So you know you have a certain amount for savings, you have a certain amount for groceries, you have a certain amount for shopping or whatever you may need. You allocate a certain amount of cash money into an envelope so that you can um, stay on track. So what's good about it? So what's good is it's shown that when you have to physically send over or use cash or give away cash, you're ten, you tend to spend less. I know personally, whenever I have cash, I just completely forget about it. If I have cash, you might as well see it as good as gone. Once the money in the envelope for the month is gone, you're done spending from that category. Also, you can physically move money from other envelopes into another envelope to cover the expenses of uh, over, like, overspending in one category versus another. So what's bad about it? I think it's extremely time consuming to go to the bank during bank hours with a job. You know, in 2024, who is going to the bank to get a cash withdrawal from the bank so that I can stuff, so I can basically begin my budgeting. Um, personally, I think that is very um, obsolete. What's ugly about it? I also think it's kind of unsafe. Going home from, you know, going to ATMs, going to ATMs to withdraw cash, what happens if you get mugged? It's not as secure as if you get mugged and you have only cards. You could always cancel your cards, um, but you can never get the cash that was stolen from you back. So who does this benefit? If you are a very visual learner, this could be the best budgeting strategy for you because you can physically see where the money is going and you can physically move money from different envelopes to cover overspending. So it could be the best strategy for you if you're very visual. All right, last but not least, zero-based budgeting. So what is it? What is zero-based budgeting? This is when you assign a dollar amount to every single category of your budget. So you start with your um, income for the month and you subtract the amount of money that you need for each category. And then at the end, every dollar should equal zero. So you're giving, you're giving every dollar a job. A lot of people have talked about it as give every dollar a job. What's good about it? It's custom. So unlike um, the budgeting trend we were talking about earlier where it was very generic, this is custom. So if you are going on vacation next month, you can change your budgeting strategy to fit that. If it's Christmas, you can prepare for that. It, you can, it's a very custom strategy. What's bad about it? It's time consuming. If you're somebody who doesn't enjoy getting into the numbers, this might not be the best strategy for you. What's ugly about it? There's not much flexibility in it. Once you have decided for the month where all your money is going, it's very hard if something pops up to accommodate that request. So if you get a bill halfway through the month that you weren't expecting, you can't really um, flex to that expense. You just kind of have to wait until you get paid again. So who does this, so who does this benefit? People with fluctuating income, this is probably the best strategy for you because your income is constantly changing. This would be the strategy that helps accommodate um, having a variable income. So there you have it, the good, the bad, and the ugly of many popular budgeting trends. Let me know in the comments which budgeting trend is your favorite and let me know which budgeting trend you think I use. As always, like this video to let me know you enjoy this type of content. I definitely use that data to decide which video I make next, which videos stay, and which videos go. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss another video. And finally, don't forget to sign up for the 52 actionable challenges 
like I said, I've been working very hard on these challenges and I just want you to subscribe. It's free and it's helpful. It helps you earn more money, save more money, and spend money on things that you actually care about. The link for that is in the description. Okay, bye! Bye.